fake futurism of Elon Musk? What is this? Inexplicably an exclamation mark. Uh, yeah, today marks 365 Earth days since the spacecraft Dragon 5 touched down safely at Eden Interplanetary Spaceport. And I'm happy to report that everything has gone according to plan. The water mines continue to draw ample moisture from the soil. Food grows and grazes in the agricultural biomes. And more importantly than anything, those who arrived here as refugees have begun to become citizens. What they left behind on Earth in terms of creature comforts is more than made up for in their ability to dream. Their newfound capacity to imagine a future beyond right. Okay, I'm skipping this uh, intro bit because I want to get to the meaty parts. You see, this seems like a good bit, uh, essay. I just want to I just want to get to the meat. Elon though. Musk is something of a lightning rod for popular opinion, at least online anyway, to his support. Shouts out to my oi bros, by the way. You guys are doing it big. OK, I love you. He's a continual source of inspiration, a real life Tony Stark. Not only is he a successful entrepreneur, but an innovator whose swagger is matched only by his unending ambition to make real technologies which previously joking, were the right? reserve of science fiction. To his he's detractors, sarcastic. he's a point of ridicule. Someone who seeks to take credit for the work of his engineers and who often proposes solutions to problems for which better, more workable solutions. Yeah, like a like a one way tunnel where you can only drive Tesla's 35 miles down the line, down that tunnel kind of seems like, uh, I don't know, a little bit stupider than making, uh, you know, better use of said tunnels uh, in the forms of uh, Getting a train cart, for example, and maybe putting it on rails. I don't know. That would be... ...already exist. A great deal has thus been written and said about Elon Musk. On this website, for instance, Oliver Thorne of Philosophy Tube has provided a great examination of how Musk tries to present himself as a kind of countercultural figure, whilst, in truth, being pretty much the archetypical capitalist in how he runs his companies. In this video, I want to take a different approach. For... Dead naming question mark. Uh, was she out at that point? I don't know how to do that. Uh, British doing dead naming kind of sus. No, I, I, I don't know how. Yeah, it's an old video. I don't think she had uh, come out. Chat. You just said philosophy tube. That's not dead naming. No, 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 no. You, you don't understand. Like, I, I don't even know how uh to appropriately and like adequately. The rule is to still refer to them as their chosen name unless they say something. No, no, no. This is before that anyway. This is before that anyway. Chat. This is before. This is an old video. This is from 2020. And, and uh, Abigail had not come out uh, yet. So calm the fuck down before you jump down someone's throat so quickly. Okay? But I also don't know what the adequate way... Like, do you not point to older videos then? You know what I mean? That is so rabbit. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. Chat is just like trying to find something to be annoyed at. Um, but I also don't know, um, I don't know how you would normally, uh, I don't know how you would normally show like an older video of, of, uh, someone like philosophy tube who has incredible work, uh, pre, uh, gender confirmation. Abigail said herself to treat her old videos as her playing a character. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Who are you talking about? So the person that that uh, uh, Tom Nicholas uh, pointed to is a friend of the show, uh, Philosophy Tube. She is a trans uh, uh, bread tuber, YouTube content creator. Uh, she does a lot of these like essays, and they're they're wonderful. And um, and basically, uh, before they, I mean, they they had a huge profile on the internet as a YouTube essayist before they uh, came out um as a as a trans woman so it's always like uh i don't know what the appropriate way to to point to like an older video anyway but yeah no this video came out in 2020 abigail didn't come out until 2021 so obviously like there's nothing wrong here uh with what uh that it just addressed the dead name while watching the video oh okay so you will just say like uh in a situation like that you would normally say like okay philosophy tube uh, this is an older video where she's playing a character or something, right? Here's Abigail's take on her old... 
In light of recent news, folks have asked whether I'm comfortable with them sharing pre-transition episodes of Philosophy Tube about Amy Coney Barrett. I guess we'll just have to rigidly apply the original meaning, even if the facts have changed. Lol. <laughs> For real, though, I'm cool with people watching old videos, but please don't do it where I might see the walking, talking corpse that used to present the show creeps me out. Oh, okay. When you say this video, some chatters don't know. You mean the Elon video? You can just always say Abigail all the time, even refer uh, all the time ever referring to her pre-transition yeah no i i know okay I, I i get that anyway let's let's continue i don't think that those who hang on musk's every word have simply been duped i think that there are ways in which musk is fairly distinct from the other entrepreneurial figures which surround him and this distinction lies in his unashamed belief in the future Tech entrepreneurs in particular often talk about disruption. They regularly try to position the various products that they're bringing to the market as having the potential to completely change the way we live. This lofty rhetoric, however, is soon undercut. Time doesn't matter. Use people's names. You're wrong, Azan. That's like parents not respecting trans people's names because they used to have a different name. So you say Abigail playing a character, not her dead name? Dude, stream experiment. Take a deep breath. Calm down, like to yourself, really quickly. Sorry to say this, but you are behaving in a hysterical capacity right now because you're fundamentally misunderstanding the situation at hand. Not only did I not uh, say anything or, or dead name someone, okay? I asked what the appropriate thing would be in that situation, got an answer for it. But also, this person, this person that's doing this video would have to have had precognitive capabilities to know that philosophy tube was a trans woman because philosophy tube at that point had not come out i don't think you're upset at people for not knowing the future not being able to predict the future right because that would be fucking insane and i don't think you're a fucking insane person perhaps maybe a little angry right now for no reason but when it turns out that what they're actually trying to sell us is a microwave that connects to the internet or something similarly mundane. Whatever questions we might raise about Elon Musk's specific proposals for the future, and I will raise a few towards the end of this video, they're at least genuinely pretty bold. One might argue, for instance, that the underground roads that he wants to build as part of his loop project would likely have less impact on congestion and on efforts to combat the climate crisis than simply laying on a few extra buses or metro trains each hour. Nevertheless, the idea of boring a web of roads under a city is, at the very least, genuinely ambitious. Well, I'll talk a little bit about what I think some of the potential social, economic, and political ramifications of the individual projects, which comprise what I'm going to refer to as musky and futurism, are towards the end of this video. What I want to focus on, for the most part, is why Musk's vision resonates with so many people. If you're a Musk fan yourself, then you'll likely have your own specific reasons for admiring the man, and I don't want to take those away from you. But I do want to ask more broadly what it is about our contemporary moment and the recent past that makes Musk feel to many like such a breath of fresh air. I want to ask what societal desires Musk's invitations to imagine bold futures respond to. Frequent viewers of my channel will not be surprised to learn that doing so is going to involve a bit of a history lesson and a ramble through changing perceptions of the future from the early- Tesla tunnels with some idiot capitalists would come up instead of Metro because Metro is socialism. Yes, uh, every part of Silicon Valley, if you guys have not understood this so far, every part of the tech bubble, especially in Silicon Valley, has basically been uh, deregulation to the already limited amount of regulation that a capitalist bourgeois uh, government would even apply to most industry, uh, that kind of deregulation being sold as disruption. Uber, for example, is considered disruptive technology, right? Well, what has Uber done? It's basically cut out any kind of uh, regulatory uh, forces that would ensure that like, people that are picking you up and taking you from point A to point B have some level of protection uh, or, or as, as workers and also they have to abide by certain rules so that, uh, you know, they're not fucking murdering you. It's not like innovative. It's not innovative technology. It's simply just uh, a way to to cut out uh, the the prior 
uh, industry that came before it that is still unfortunately abiding by certain levels of, of regulation. Also, there is still like issues with taxi licenses and medallions and whatnot, right? But, uh, but that doesn't change the reality of what Uber is doing. Yeah, it's not even deregulation. It's side sidestepping the law with innovation. Exactly. They don't. Uh, it's the same. And you see examples of this where they'll be like, "Oh, we have a disruptive new technology that's going to eliminate the need for like a market." And it's basically a vending machine. You know what I mean? You're like selling a vending machine, but when you slap on the disruptive uh, sticker onto it, like every fucking nerd uh, comes in their pants uh, when they when they hear that. Oh, it's so it's so disruptive. Oh, it's like, dude, it's literally a vending machine. You are describing a vending machine. It's not disruptive. The twentieth century to the present day. I hope you'll stick with it though, because understanding how we got to where we are now and how people's relationship to the idea of the future has evolved over time and is, Elon Musk is no I think, different. essential for gaining a fully contextualized understanding of exactly what Elon Musk is offering us and why our culture has, for the most part, so enthusiastically embraced his futuristic dreams. While many of Elon Musk's ambitious visions for the future remain at concept stage, there's one thing for which we have to give him some credit. The popularization of the electric car. In a Dude, that's a pretty bad take. Pre-Uber, there was very limited ability to use any tech to request a ride. You had to sit on a curb. No, you're... you're. Wait, why did you time him out? What the fuck? Um, I don't know why you timed them out. Pre-Uber, there was very limited ability to use any tech request to ride. You had to sit on a curb and pray a cab would roll by. It's true. This is right. Uh, or call in and schedule a ride in advance. Agree that they should have, they've turned into a horrible capitalist deregulatory be behemoth, but they start with something truly new. No, it wasn't. First of all, there was a disruptive new technology. It's called a fucking phone. And also, uh, technology that, uh, combines the, the cab company, the pre-existing cab companies with a, an application like that would have actually uh, been the disruptive technology. But the real disruptive technology is what uh, the real disruptive technology in that circumstance is basically, uh, uh, you know, allowing random people to be able to drive you around. Back in the day, this used to be called uh, in Turkey is called Korsan pirate uh, uh, cabs. Okay. And that that literally used to be illegal in many places in, in Turkey and in many other places. Like it's it used to be illegal to just fucking pick someone up and like drive them around. Do you know why? Part of it is because obviously they were in the pocket of big taxi. Okay, certainly, you know, I I understand that. Um, but the other reason was because you know there's no there's no regulation. There's no regulation around who gets to pick who up. You know what I mean? Pirate taxis. I love my country. I was such good homies with like three pirates a few years ago. Like taxi medallions are a problem, certainly. Okay, but what you but you need to re what you need to recognize is that like there needs to be some level of control over who gets to drive you around. Otherwise, you get into a lot of issues. Um, otherwise, you'll run into a lot of issues. Uh, with with you know. God knows who driving you around. If you've ever been in a fucking Uber where the dude is like straight up on his fucking phone, like you know, swiping right on tinder and like trying to set up a booty call going you know 75 miles on a 35 you'll know what i mean you know and obviously cab drivers are fucking crazy too but at least there's like one level of additional layer of protection in that situation um before uber you had to call a cab and pay at least 30 dollars. now with uber you use an app and pay at least 30 dollars. yeah Airbnb is a great example, right? Airbnb, another great example, absolutely eviscerated the housing market. It was just an application that allowed you to, again, sidestep prior zoning, uh, like prior regulations that made it so that you couldn't just like randomly fucking uh, purchase a bunch of properties and then use them as like short-term uh, short rental units. Okay, I prefer being able to order an Uber in minutes for a fraction of the price. I, I like the amenities that Uber offers. What I don't like is how Uber is offering said amenities. They're doing it at, they're doing it, but the people that are paying the cost are the drivers themselves. And they would not do it unless they were incredibly desperate. So the more desperate a working class becomes, the more servile they become, and the more you can take advantage of said working class. Uber is a great example of this.
2019 paper summarising a study into consumer perceptions of electric vehicles, Zoe Long et al wrote that Several participants explained that Tesla changed their perceptions that electric cars are slow, ugly, have limited range and not fun to drive. Several participants noted that Tesla is cool and that owning one communicates a symbolic message to others. As recently as a decade ago, electric cars were seen as pretty lame. Their quietness and eco-credentials were the antithesis of the kind of vehicles that were fetishised in the Fast and Furious franchise or in games such as Gran Turismo, Forza and Grand Theft Auto. Tesla's interventions in the market, however, have changed all of this. Electric cars are now not only more widely available, they're also seen as pretty cool. Of course, neither Elon Musk nor Tesla invented the electric vehicle. Their success lies in having changed the popular perception of an already existing technology. And in this, Musk has more than a little in common with the original automobile entrepreneur, Henry Ford. Similarly to Musk, Henry Ford did not invent the car. Cars had been sold commercially for more than a decade prior to the founding of the Ford Motor Company in 1903. Early automobiles, however, were expensive, hard to come by and often highly unreliable. It was only with the launch of the Ford Model T in 1908 that the motor car became the middle class's preferred means of transport. <laughs> Henry Ford and, and Elon Musk, you know, just advocates for a different way of organizing, you know, just actually, I don't know. I don't want to say, I don't want to say that, uh, Elon Musk is an apartheid fan. Okay. I'm not going to say that, but, uh, his family, his dad, at least certainly took advantage of, uh, of, of the, the lack of protections, uh, afforded to black people in, uh, the countries that he operated in. So there's that, uh, Henry Ford also is a very famously, uh, pro, uh, apartheid uh, before apartheid i mean he kind of was like big guy loved loved pamphlets loved giving loved giving pamphlets to people about uh jewish people and uh and also you know wasn't exactly he was a big fan of hitler or sorry hitler was a big fan of him Exportation. the model t was not only more reliable but quicker and cheaper to produce thus meaning that there were more of them available and that they were cheaper to buy while innovations in the internal engineering of the car likely also played a role most of this was made possible by the ford company's innovations in the process of manufacture ford used machines to ensure consistency across parts and rather than having one highly skilled technician assemble the pieces together broke the assembly process down into individual tasks, which could each be performed by a worker who only needed to be trained in that specific task. This method of manufacture would come to be known as the Fordist model of production. And would it's pretty funny because like, uh, so this was, this was actually disruptive. Like that is real disruption. That's real innovation, okay? Straight up. That was incredibly important, okay? Profoundly important. However, however, having said that, uh, famously, people always love whitewashing uh, Henry Ford's history and acting like he was uh, really good to his workers, and he did offer some amenities. He was also a union buster and a fan of Nazis. Fundamentally alter how goods were produced the world over. There are further parallels with Musk and Tesla in the present day here too. Although it's not been entirely without its problems, Musk has sought to automate as much of the car manufacturing process as possible in order to similarly increase manufacturing speed and drive down costs. What's more instructive in our attempt to understand the appeal of Muskian futurism in the present day than Ford's technical innovations, however, is the broader cultural atmosphere of the time in which he was working. Two years after the Ford only gave the 40 hour work week after the workers threatened to burn his factory down if he didn't. Yeah. Why, why did they just not idly sit around and thank Henry Ford every day for being magnanimous enough to offer them a simple job? 
So dumb. Ford Motor Company began production of the Model T in Detroit. The Italian poet Filippo Marinetti wrote a short document called The Foundation and Manifesto of Futurism. This manifesto, which was shortly published on the front page of the French newspaper Le Figaro, decried futile veneration of the past and exhorted the reader to embrace speed, light, creative destruction, and, above all else, the possibilities of the future yet to come. Marinetti's document set the stage for an artistic and social movement known, as the title of the manifesto would suggest, as Futurism. In his desire to break with the past and look excitedly towards the future, however, Marinetti also ably summed up what we might call the spirit of the age. For human beings haven't always believed in the future. Certainly, people have always known that each day, week, year and decade would be followed by another. Nevertheless, the future hasn't always been viewed as a realm of possibilities, and our journey towards it has not always been viewed as a positive. The Christian faith, for instance, has often seen the passage of time as a negative, as a progressive journey away from the innocence of the Garden of Eden and the Word of God. Across art, industry and politics, however, during the early 20th century, the future came to be celebrated, fetishised even. We can see this in the economic sphere, with industrialists such as Ford racing to find ways of making goods cheaper and of higher quality. We see it in the cultural sphere too. Following Marinetti, artists of all forms and disciplines constantly published this. manifestos detailing how they would tear up previous expectations. I have this painting. I had this painting when I was younger in, in my room. I don't know why of what art could and should be. We see it in the political sphere, in which followers of ideologies yeah, original, including yes, communism, original fascism, Picasso. and even the dominant creeds of liberalism and capitalism dreamt up new ways yeah. of structuring society. Across each of these spheres, we see attempts to imagine bold futures in which society is almost unrecognisable from the present. All of this is detailed in Franco Berardi's 2011 book, After the Future, in which he christens the 20th century the century that trusted in the future. He writes that the 20th century is pervaded by a religious belief in the future. This belief was perhaps put under some strain by the horrific consequences of fascism in Europe and of Stalinism in the Soviet Union. Nevertheless, after the Second World War, it continued on relatively unabated. One only has to think of the space race, at the heart of which was a utopian, futuristic vision of humanity conquering the stars. Or in the UK, Harold Wilson's declaration that the country would embrace the white heat of technology and undergo a scientific revolution. If such bold appeals to the future existed throughout the 20th century then, why is it that Elon Musk's proposals often feel so unique in the present day? For, again, whatever we think of his specific proposals, the unashamed manner in which Musk dares to dream of a future which is on some level different to the present day certainly stands out. And this clearly says something about the way in which the future is viewed elsewhere in our culture, or at least has been viewed until recently. In order to understand why Muskian futurism often seems so unusual in the present, we therefore need to understand what happened in the interim between the bold dreaming of the 20th century and our present situation, what Berardi refers to as the slow cancellation of the future. Starting in the late 1970s and early 1980s, the undying belief in the future which dominated the 20th century began to steadily decline. Perhaps this was the result of sheer exhaustion. Perhaps this was a result of the economic crises which dominated the period. Either I mean, way, I, I just want to hear about fading belief. In I want to just hear about like what, where is musky and futurism? Okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, I want to know what he's going to say about Elon Musk's like bullshit futurism rather than the historical context of like futurism. Don't get mad at me, guys, but like there's a lot of news that I want to cover, so I'm gonna. I'm going to skip uh... to ask what its appeal is and what other social, political, economic and cultural movements it might have something in common with. But the video is the fake futurism of Elon Musk by Tom Nicholas. So if you guys want to watch that, you can.
uh, on your own. But I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna skip to. It's a really good. It's a good video. I just wanna I just wanna see what he has to say about Elon Musk because there's more I I need to. I want to end by making some observations about Musk's projects themselves. A few weeks back, Musk posted a rendering of the plans for Central Hall Station, one of the stops in the Las Vegas Convention Center loop tunnel Las system, Vegas. which, according to an article by Mike Brown for Inverse, is designed to take 4,400 attendees per hour in one of two directions over a distance of nearly a mile. The responses Crazy. to Musk's tweet were filled with people comparing it to other forms of transportation. Many pointed out, for instance, that each car can only take five passengers, with the proposed minivan type pods only being able to take 12. When we take into account the fact that most metro trains can carry more than 1,000 people at any one time, the loop system thus seems to be a little bit lacking. Yet, yeah, I don't think this is a bug but a feature. In a 2018 episode of Star Trek Discovery, Musk was mentioned as an example of an innovative pioneer. Now, I've never actually watched an episode of Star Trek, but the world of the show is, I'm told, relatively utopian. In his book Four Futures, Peter- Quite literally. Quite literally communist. To phrase uses it as an example of a potential future in which both scarcity and social hierarchy have been eliminated. It's the basis he writes of that communist that We thought. could indeed call it a communist society, yes. in the sense that Marx used the term, a world run according to the principle, from each according to their ability, to each according to their need. No, it is. Star Trek, I mean, like I OG Star Trek, was quite literally a communist utopian society. That's... That's what the Federation was. Think anyone's under the... I, I, I didn't even watch, like, I wasn't even, like, a big fan or anything, but even I knew that. ...impression that Musk is any form of communist, although he did once claim to be a socialist and he evidently has a deep understanding of Marx's work. Nevertheless, I do think we can often fall into the trap of assuming that Elon Musk's various projects are about building a future in which, as in Star Trek, we'll all share. When we see mock-ups of the loop system or hear of colonies on Mars, we assume them to be intended to serve everyone and to praise them on that basis. I think this is a mistake. For I don't think Muskian futurism is intended to serve everyone. I think the limited capacity of the loop system is a central feature. This is not a mass public transportation system. This is a proposal for a series of gilded corridors, which enable elites such as Musk to get to their destinations quicker and without having to mix with the rest of us. The colonies on Mars too are not a futuristic vision of new life for the many, but a means for the few to escape. That's, that's my favorite part about fucking Musk fans, dude. Like, Musk fanboys think that Elon Musk is the Tony Stark that is, like, going to save everyone. Meanwhile, he's not. He's just going to save him. If he can, that is. Well, he's also, like, dog shit and just over-promises and never actually delivers because his stands, like, his fucking fully grown adult stands, unironically, think that, uh, you know, he can't do anything wrong. But he is also kind of dog shit with uh, actual technological achievements for the most part. Like, a lot of promises. Like, uh, the neural link is a great example of this. It's just like, so far all we've gotten are is ethical misconduct and monkey genocide out of the neural link project. Um, so, you know, he's basically living the life of a, of a fucking comic book supervillain. And all of these fucking dummies think that he's going to save them. No, dude. Elon Musk and a lot of the technological achievements that are supposed to make our lives easier have historically not turned into making our lives easier. The advent of the phone, like the, the fact that you can have supercomputers basically in your pocket now, only make you 24-7 accessible to your bosses. It makes monitoring your behavior easier. They use all of that information to make you more servile, okay? To make you subservient. And a lot of these Elon Musk fanboys are the most servile motherfuckers out there, and they don't even recognize it. They're like, they're, they're, they're basically like championing and banging the fucking drums for what they perceive to be their own salvation because they've unfortunately misunderstood their position in society. They do not see, they do not recognize that they themselves are workers, okay? And class mobility is increasingly more difficult.
for the average American worker. They think if I look up to someone like Elon, uh, if I look up to someone like Elon, I too one day will be like a multimillionaire just like him or a billionaire just like him. But in fact, he's selling you a fucking vision where you're, con- you're going to continue being servile. He's selling you a dream, and that dream is never going to be achieved by someone like you, specifically because the, the, the structures that he is reinforcing and the inequality that he is uh, normalizing every fucking day is what is making it impossible for you to achieve even a fraction of, of emancipation. Escape the effects of the climate crisis. Telling me communism, if I preach it, I can have a big, lovely mansion too? I will never tell you that. I will never, ever tell you that. And that's the saddest part. You know what the saddest part about it is? I'm very honest with you, okay? There's nothing wrong with dreaming, for the record, okay? But, you know, look at fucking false prophets and recognize that, like, your, your skepticism should be afforded to, to false prophets, a snake oil salesman, if you will. I, myself, have never told you that. I've never been like, oh man, you know, you too can sell communism one day and have a big lovely mansion too. Okay? I've never said that. Elon sucks keep donating to Nico Hassan and BLM. Like, people don't donate to me because I'm like offering them some kind of fucking communist utopia liberation. People donate to me because they see me as an entertainer who has an approach and ideas that they recognize within themselves, okay? I am communicating the anxieties that they themselves feel. In a lot of instances, I've maybe even moved them away from having prior false notions like thinking that they're fucking one day going to be a billionaire or they are all themselves temporarily embarrassed billionaires right now, okay? It's entertainment and sometimes educational, okay? That's the reason why people willingly give money to me and also to avoid the top of the hour ad break at the top of the hour every hour. So I run a 60 second ad break. It's the only time the content is paywalled in some respects. And people are like, you know what? I don't want to see those ads. I watch hours and hours and hours of Hassan's content. I like him. I'm going to give him fucking, I'm going to give him a, a subscription. I'm going to give him a $5 a month subscription, or I'm going to fucking use my Twitch prime on Hasanabi for free. As long as, uh, you know, you have an Amazon prime account that you've connected to your Twitch account. Here is the woman ad break now. Um, the only thing you sell is the top of the hour ad break. Genocide 2AR. I give the subs. What the fuck kind of name is that, bro? Why do you have genocide in your name? Why does Twitch not ban uh, like this? Oh, dude. Do we have fucking the Dojog? Thank you for the 20. Give the subs. Oh, God. Do we have like fucking weird like Chan incels invading so they can get their like names seen on the, uh, on, on the fucking, you know on the screen for a second in this piece of shit real quick hey thank you for the fucking five gifted subs you fucking psycho their logs are so normal though six month subscriber what the fuck Fortune commenting on your status kick w just a dumb username maybe they were being nice and i'm just like fucking uh attacking them for no reason did i forget to run the ad holy shit or did i run the ad hold on I always do this shit, bro. I'm always like, yeah, I'm going to fucking run the ad break. And then I forget. Hold on. Sorry. We're going to get back to the video in a second. I get it, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I did. I did run the ad. I, I, I understand it. Look, you, you want to shoot the messenger because that feels better for you. Okay. I did run the ad. Yes. You want to shoot the messenger. That feels better for you. You're like, uh, I've known that the world has been, uh, I, I want to believe that the world is a certain way and I can overcome said shortcomings. I'm built differently, okay? And this fucking asshole is just like lying to me, telling me that the world is not the way that I perceive it. The world is not the way that like I've been taught it was. And change is scary. Change can be awful. That's precisely why, uh, you know, you, you resist it and you don't want to think about it beyond, uh, you don't want to think like there is, you're, you're, in a position that you're in as a consequence of the way that we have organized society. So you fucking lash out. You lash out at someone who's like, no, things are, you know, things should be better. Things can be better. Lash out and you say, no, fuck you. If they don't think they'll be billionaires, they think they're being exploited. They think they're being exploited is somehow fair. Yes. How come the richer you get, the more donations you get from supposed leftists? You mean to tell me there's not a single direct action they can put their money towards? 19 month subscriber are you okay 
How can your ad scam messages not make poor proletariat look like literal cooks? Please correct your shit lip pompous vernacular, idiot. How much energy consumption are you committing by making us all use power devices to watch you? 19 month subscriber? Dude, what is wrong with anarchists, dude? The average 19 month sub brain rot, dude. I swear to fucking God. She wanted her own tax break. She breaking frame coke whore. How can you be in this community for 19 months and not fucking realize how much not only have I personally donated by basically fucking uh, uh, showing the donations now that I engage in, but also raising money for mutual aid. Uh, even just since like I decided, you know, sometimes I'm going to fucking promote it. I don't understand how you can be in here for 19 fucking months and literally turn around and just like, and still be like, dude, you are doing nothing. You're not doing enough, dude. If Jeff Bezos paid the amount of taxes I paid, and then also on top of that, fundraised and personally gave as much as a percentage of their fucking yearly earnings as I do, we would literally solve world hunger. Like there would be no, if billionaires did that, there would be no more issues remaining. You understand that, right? So go yell at them. That fucking Ellering charity just last month? No, not even that. We also did fucking $160,000 for mutual aid uh, groups that do abortion. They aren't accessible like you. Exactly. And that's the thing. That's the, that's the thing, okay? That's the point. It's just like, because it's not about like actually solving systemic problems. It's about feeling a sense of control and power in an otherwise powerless planet. When you yell at me and I respond to you, you feel like you did something. You feel like you actually achieved some kind of change. Or at the very least, you feel like you've made some kind of change. That's why so many people are obsessed with, uh, uh, you know, holding content creators accountable, right? Like they do that all the time. You're not really doing that. You're just, just blinded by... Uh, you're just blinded by whatever kind of fucking anger and vitriol someone else is, is, has whipped you into and they're making money off of you, but you, but I'll give it to you. I sometimes do give that instant gratification and that's why a lot of people do it. It is however, very uh, selfish. You are selfish to the 30,000 other people that are in the chat that just want commentary. Where the egalitarian mask of Muskian futurism slipped most obviously was in the announcement of the Cybertruck, a bulletproof, supposedly solar-powered electric pickup truck. We often think of electric vehicles as being intended to stave off the climate crisis, although whether they're the best means of doing so is itself debatable. This vehicle, however, is not a vehicle for stopping the coming of the end times, this is an early concept of a vehicle for the end times. Speaking to Jay Leno about the Cybertruck, Musk himself stated that we want to be a leader in apocalypse technology. This then is a vehicle for the elite to traverse a world which is both ecologically devastated and in which there is likely to be increasing hostility towards them. So to conclude, Musk's vision of the future may be bold. Muskian futurism may, on the surface, fulfill a present desire to believe in the future again, to imagine how human ingenuity might be harnessed in order to overcome the problems of the present and to fundamentally reshape society. The pressing question to ask of these projects, however, is, to my mind, not what their logistical viability might be, but who they're for. To argue that Musk's proposals do not solve the problems they are intended to solve often leads down a path of forcing people to make a choice between the future and the present. And things are not so binary. A better future is possible. The challenge lies in trying to articulate one that is as bold as that offered by Elon Musk, but is one in which we can all share. Uh, I, I get the underlying uh, argument. He's right. Like, I mean, basically what he's saying is something I talk about with automation all the time. I love automation. I am never like anti-automation, right? But thinking that automation is going to magically bring about uh, a communist utopia in a post-scarcity world is actually a foolish endeavor, considering that all technological achievements thus far in a capitalist organization of the economy have only worked to make us more subservient and to make us better fucking workers. It's a, it's a way to extract even more value from the labor force. So what you actually have to change alongside with automation is 
uh, the organization of the economy. Because no matter what happens, distribution, uh, the distribution of profits and the, the extraction of labor value from the proletariat is at the heart of the way we've organized society. And until that changes, those profit margins are going to get slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. We're going to look for new methods of extraction of both uh, instead of, of uh, you know, opening up people's lives so they can feel more comfortably. You're still going to have to clean the toilets, okay? Someone's going to always have to clean the toilets. And the only method, the only way to force you into uh, that position is by ensuring uh, that there is an unequal uh, uh, class system where you have a budget shortfall built into your existence in the form of student loan debts, in the form of, of uh, you know, how expensive it is to just be a fucking poor person. That's the only way that you will... Uh, that's the only way that you will uh, continue taking these shit jobs because there's no other opportunity for your survival. Barely getting subsistence va wages, you know, oiling the land, cleaning the toilets, working a fucking dead end uh, desk job, just a cog in the machine. And without fundamentally altering the way that uh, the way that we have a relationship with our current means of production, we will never be able to uh, change that distribution of power and that distribution of capital. That's not going to that's not going to happen. Only way to do that is by slowly but surely building some kind of, of uh, class solidarity, uh, have a little bit of class recognition, at least a crumb, a fraction, that the billionaires certainly have, right? There's so much class solidarity amongst the billionaires. Uh, there's so much class uh, solidarity among uh, the bourgeois, okay? The bourgeoisie, capital owners. Working class does not have that. Constantly fucking eating each other alive for no fucking reason. Technology is wonderful. It's supposed to make our lives better. But under capitalism, technology is used to work at the behest of improving profit margins. Okay, that's it. And without solving that, yeah, UBI seems like a great idea. But without solving that underlying uh, power... Uh, uh, issue okay without without uh reconfiguring i guess the the distribution of power and giving more power to uh the the broader majority the 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 actual 99 percent, the working class there will never be uh you know there will there will never be change you're just going to keep living in a fucking shittier and shittier uh existence the next generation is going to be worse off than you while you just have like cooler things to consume, you know what I mean?